all of a sudden I feel quite hot. Let's bow our heads in prayer, please. We praise you, Lord, for this day. We praise you for the things that you do for us. We praise you, Lord, for you being you. And today, Lord, we pray that you'll be the teacher, that whatever is said here in this church today might be benefit to somebody here, because we ask it in your name. where a group of U.S. Army soldiers on a long hike during a campaign in southern Italy had arrived and camped near a town named Casino. While scripture is being read in church, one man who has only a deck of playing cards pulls them out and spreads them in front of him. He is immediately spotted by a sergeant who believes the soldier is playing cards in church and orders him to put them away. The soldier is then arrested and taken before the provost marshal to be punished. The provost marshal demands an explanation to which the soldier explains the significance of each card. One, the ace, the one true God. Two, the Old Testament and the New Testament in the Bible. Three, the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. Four, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, evangelists and authors of the four Gospels. Five, the two groups of five virgins who trimmed their lamps for a wedding. Five were wise by saving enough oil and were admitted, while the other five were foolish, did not have enough oil, and were shut out. Six, God created the earth in six days. Seven, God rested on the seventh day, now known as the Sabbath. Eight, the eight righteous people whom God saved during the great flood, Noah, his wife, their sons and their wives. <clears throat> nine, of the ten lepers whom Jesus cleansed, nine of them did not even thank him. Ten, the ten commandments God handed down to Moses. King, God the Father. Queen, the mother of Jesus. Jack or Knave, Satan or the Devil. 365 spots, the number of days in a year. 52 cards, the number of weeks in a year. 13 tricks, the number of weeks in a season or quarter of a year. Four suits, the approximate number of weeks in a month. That was the hearts, the spade, the diamonds and the clubs. 12 face cards, the number of months in a year. <clears throat> he in, then ends his story by saying that my pack of cards serves me as a Bible, an almanac, and a prayer book. The narrator then closes the story by stating that this story is true by claiming he is the soldier in question. The text does not say whether the provost master will spare the soldier any penalty, but it is possible to infer from the text that he did. And I thank Kevin for searching that out for me, that story. Many of you have probably heard that story before. I think there are various versions of it. <clears throat> you may wonder why I would commence this talk talking about a deck of cards. That soldier could relate the cards to the Bible. Not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I also see a connection with the Bible, with the things I have seen and experienced. <clears throat> About 30 years ago, we returned to Hartsfeld Haven in Papua New Guinea, which is on the, the northern coast of the, the island of Papua New Guinea, where I'd previously worked before I was married. And it was a leper and a um, TB station. And um, it was a beautiful place. <clears throat> We'd been responsible for looking after t 200 TB patients and 200 leper patients. And when I went back after some years, it was so good to be able to meet up with some of the, sp the patients and the staff members that I had known before. <clears throat> As the Sabbath was closing, our attention was drawn to the most magnificent sunset that I have ever seen. The station was built on a small harbour 
and coconut and coffee plantations were on the left, and on the right, the, the sea was there in the middle, and then there was the coffee plantations on the left, and on this side was a big um, volcanic island called Manam Island on the right-hand side, very similar in looks to Rangitoto. Now, as far as the eye could see, looking out over the, hi the horizon, the colours in the sky were the most vibrant. The clouds billowing were tinged with gold, and then they turned to a, a brilliant red, and then purple, then mauve. And all was, this was reflected in the water as well. Someone said, is that what it will be like when Jesus returns? This kaleidoscape of colour lasted for some time. <clears throat> the only other time I've seen anything like it was when we in the United States and we were travelling through the Grand Canyon. And we were going through the Zion Canyon and there were similar, because it was sunset time, there were similar colours there. <clears throat> God created this world for us to enjoy. We can't imagine what the Garden of Eden must have been like. We're just given a faint glimpse. But we know that after the sixth day, Genesis 1.31, God saw everything that he had made. Behold, it was very good. And if God said it was very good, it would be exceptional. Our world could have been created without all the beautiful colour we see in nature, but I'm convinced that God loves colour. There's not just one shade of green in the hills and the grasslands and the mountains, but there are many, many different shades which make it interesting for us to look upon. And also when you come to think of our foods, in the fruits and the vegetables, there are beautiful colours, in brightness of red and orange peppers, tomatoes, carrots, beetroot, as well as not to mention the flowers, of which there are many, many different hue, shapes and colours. All point to the creator who is the master designer who not only created the shape, but gave each item its own distinctive flavour and perfume. <clears throat> when we lived in South Africa, we visited a lovely park called High Noon in the Cape. We overheard some people talking about baby cheetahs, and we heard them say that these were the first little babies that were ever bred in captivity. And of course, my husband being who he was, I was wanting to have a look at them. So we climbed into our car and we went round the back of the park and saw these little baby cheetahs, cheetahs. But that didn't take my interest so much as the fact that there were two tigers there. And <clears throat> these tigers were just in a very makeshift sort of a pen with an iron mesh between us and them. And these tigers, they just sprawled themselves up climbed up on the mesh so you got the full length of these beautiful animals and they just they were purring and the keepers said they just want to be friends with you they just want you to touch them and handle them but they had in the past they had had them out and wandering around the people they had a collar and a chain on them and they would take them and everybody would be able to touch them and fondle them but because they'd got so big that they decided that perhaps it was a little bit of a da bit of dangerous. <clears throat> One little girl that I heard talk on 3ABM, she said that she thought that the design on the tiger's face was so organised. You just want to put your arms around their neck and stroke their fur. <clears throat> Another amazing experience was visiting the Victoria Falls on the borders of Zambia and Zimbabwe. The tremendous amount of water coming over the falls and the spray washing you is something you don't forget. I remember I was walking along the edge of the falls and uh, we, one time we went in our swimming suits because the spray was so much coming up over you just got soaked. And other times we took an umbrella but that was almost useless. <coughs> You just don't forget in a hurry these things that you've seen, they're magnificent. There was one other time some years ago in my younger years that um, there, was, um, there were six of us all together, uh, Gret Gretchen, Roger French and Desiree and Ross and my husband and I, we tracked the Milford Track together. 
And as you walk along the floor of the valley and these mountains are just towering above you and you just look and you look and you wonder when it's going to stop because these mountains are just so high. You realise just how insignificant you are <clears throat> when you see something like that. Yet Jesus knows each one of us personally, he knows us perhaps better than we know ourselves. Those mountains remind me of of a scripture in Amos 4.33 that said, He who formed the mountains creates the wind and reveals his thoughts to man. He who turns dawn to darkness and treads the high places of the earth, the Lord God Almighty is his name. <clears throat> Recently a stray peacock has come to join the peacockers on my patch at home. He appears harmless enough and seems to be largely ignored by the other birds. He doesn't spend all his time there, he just sort of comes for a day at a time and then he's off. I saw him there yesterday. <clears throat> anyway, yeah, most of the time that he's there his tail is down so you don't see the colours. But the other day he had his tail up and in all its glory. And I wasn't too far from him being able to see the intense blueness of his person <clears throat> and then underneath his wing there was this beautiful, beautiful coppery coloured feathers, a multitude of feathers that spread out just like a fan underneath this big fan. <clears throat> I really appreciate birds and occasionally you see a kingfisher and many times too is. As the sun catches them as you can see the iridescent colours in their feathers. I've also have a special thrush that starts singing early in the morning. I don't think it feels the cold as it's been there every morning, whether there's frost or whether there's a heavy dew. He was there this morning chirping away. The only time I'd seen him disappear is when my cat decides he wants to get out and have a look. And the cat wouldn't touch him because he's, he's far too well fed. And, and um, But the bird just took off. But, Normally he's there and it's really lovely to, to hear him. From a peacock to one of the tiniest ones, the hummingbird. And those that are familiar with it, I think in the States, the hummingbirds are there in their many hundreds. But the ones that I saw were in Trinidad. They're only about four centimetres long and they've got a hooked beak so that they can put their beaks into the flower and get the honey for their food. The flowers must be continuously manufacturing honey as the birds would go to the same tree all the time. I watched them because my husband used to go off to work at seven o'clock in the morning and it was so hot there that I used to get out and have a swim in the swimming pool and then nobody else was around and I could see these birds coming in every morning. In fact they'd be there all throughout the day. <clears throat> These little birds use up a tremendous amount of energy because their wings are constantly moving, setting up a whirring sound. That's probably why they're called hummingbirds. Who else could create such a variety of beautiful things for our pleasure? <clears throat> In uh, Exodus 25, the Lord spoke to Moses to tell the children of Israel to bring him an offering. It was to be willingly brought. The offerings were to be gold, silver, brass, etc. And there were many other things recorded as well that they brought. Verse 8 says that they were to make the Lord a sanctuary, that he may dwell with them. We learn that they were a mixed crowd that came, the children of Israel, a mixed multitude. Many of them were rough, and by rights, I guess, a lot of them had given up the um, worship of the Most High God. They'd forgotten it. These people needed something visual and they needed a vision. And God gave them explicit directions for a building. The furniture inside, the Ark of the Covenant, the outer and the inner court. It had to be a portable construction so it could be transported from place to place. From Exodus 25, chapters 25 to Exodus 40, it tells how the Lord directed Moses with instructions for the inside and the outside of the tabernacle. 
The skin's as outward coverings were not to be as colourful as the inside, and the outward coverings were serving as a waterproof and a protection to the inside parts. Curtains of scarlet, blue and purple colours were inside. The offerings people brought included precious stones and gold earrings and bracelets. And I found this very interesting, that the gold was beaten to make fine thread that was used to embroider the curtains. And the clothes for the high priest were beautifully made. And the breastplate had the urine and the thumb on, and these special precious stones were inserted into it. And when <clears throat> God communicated with Moses or the high priest, that was when one or the other of these precious stones shone. Freely the people brought their gifts until Moses told them to stop. And there's a little lesson in that for me. Do I get my offerings willingly? Another observation I had made when driving down Manu Road on a Sabbath morning, you often see pony clubs and horse events in Barge Park. They're having their day of events and competition there. The horses are beautifully groomed, the saddles and bridles oiled, and their hooves are probably polished as well. I know when I was in a, had a calf in a calf club when I was a kid at school, we used to polish the, polish the hooves of the calves with black boot polish. And the riders' outfits are well prepared and they look as though they wear their uniform, as the saying goes, with pride. The, the horse floats would be prepared also for the time they are away from home with food and everything they need for the day's activity. There's a lesson there for me in how I prepare for the Sabbath. Considerable effort goes into having everything ready for the horses. Do you and I put as much effort into being ready for the Sabbath to meet with our God? <clears throat> from time to time, one looks at the moon, well I do anyway, and you can only see part of it because it's been covered partly with cloud or sometimes completely covered with the cloud. And that reminds me of when Jesus was on the cross. Jesus keenly felt the separation from the Father. He felt abandoned. God's presence was hidden because Jesus had taken upon himself the penalty of our sins. Mark 15 verse 34 says, tells us of the heartfelt cry of Jesus my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? <clears throat> we sing this song. We sang it last week, I think. How deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that he should give his only son to make a rich his treasure. How great the pain of searing loss, the Father turns his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one Bring many sons to glory. Mothers and maybe even fathers as well will relate to this. When your children leave, leave home, decide to leave home and want to spread their wings, <clears throat> you feel a real wrench for quite some time. Could it have been a similar experience for the Father when Jesus left the courts of heaven and came to live as a human being on this earth? On Manu Mountain there are three towers. They are re easily seen and they remind me of the three crosses on Calvary's Hill. <clears throat> the reason for the cross and what it implies has been the subject thousands of people have studied through the ages. Could we catch a glimpse of that wonderful sacrifice? The sun is so bright, having in an instant body and heat, it is just so bright it's almost blinding. And that reminds me of the scripture of Ephesians 2 11. Second verse 11, that the wicked will be destroyed by the brightness of his coming. And if you'd like to join with me in reading Revelation 
chapter 6. Verses 14, 15, and 16. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. 16 and said to the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the, la on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? When Jesus comes back the second time with all his angels, if we have disregarded him and done what we ought not to have done, we will not be able to stand the brightness of his coming. We will not be able to face him. This is so, so sad, especially for those who have had great knowledge. So take time to see the heavenly and the beauty of his handiwork and appreciate the colours God has created. Look for the lessons in the simple things we see about us, remembering that Jesus used common everyday happenings that the people could understand and were accustomed to. In Revelation 21, 10 to 14. It talks here about the new Jerusalem. <clears throat> Revelation 21, 10 to 14. And he carried me away in the spirit to the great and high mountain and showed me, this is John that God is showing, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall high and great, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and then them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city, and the gates thereof, and the wall thereof. And then it goes on to talk about how that this wall was made, that the city was made of pure gold, like unto clear glass. And the foundations had different jewels in there. I cannot imagine what a wonderful situation this would be to be able to look into the face of Jesus and to receive the reward that he has for us. I'm just wondering how many people here today will endure to the end and be able to delight in this wonderful city and enjoy God's new creation. Let's sing hymn number... 206, face to face with Christ my Saviour. Christ my Savior, face to face what will it be, when with rapture I behold Him, 
Jesus Christ who died for me. Face to face shall I behold Him far beyond the starry sky. Face to face in all His glory I shall see Him by and by. Only faintly now I see veil between, but a blessed day is coming when His glory shall be seen. Face to face shall I behold Him far beyond the starry sky. Face to face in all His glory shall see him by and by. What rejoicing in his presence when a banished grief and pain, when the crooked ways are straightened and the dark things shall be plain. Face shall I behold him far beyond the starry sky. Face to face in all his glory, I shall see him by and by. Face to face, oh blissful moment. Face to face to see and know, face to face with my Redeemer, Jesus Christ who loves me so. Face to face shall I behold Him far beyond the starry sky. In all his glory, I shall see him by and by. Let's pray. I pray today, Lord, that all will be all will want to look into the face of Jesus, and I pray that all will believe the promise that our eyes have not seen. Our ears have not heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Bless us to this end, please God. Amen. <laughs>